Hello friends, welcome to my channel Civil Engineering Forum. Today we will continue with the 7th lecture of the topic friction. So in this lecture we will understand what are the laws of friction. At first we will get uh, into the laws of static friction. So we are having uh, 5 laws of uh, static friction where the first is the friction force always acts in the direction opposite to that in which the body tends to move. What we understood in the first lecture was uh, friction force is always the opposite to that of the external force. So if uh, the external force is acting towards the right, the frictional force will always act towards the left. That is the first law of static friction. The second is the magnitude of frictional force is equal to the external force. So this P will be always equal to F. Then the third law says the ratio of limiting friction and the normal reaction is constant. Mu is equal to F by N. This is the coefficient of friction which we understood in the last lecture. Mu is equal to F by N. This is the third law of static friction. Then if we talk about the fourth one, the friction force does not depend upon the area of contact surface but it depends on the roughness of the surface. So here we can add the frictional force does not depend on the area of the surface. So if we talk about this box, the area which this box cover does not matter but how rough this surface is does matter. So we can add here that the friction force does not depend upon the area of the contact surface between the two surfaces but it depends on the roughness of the surface. Then fifth one is the friction force depends upon the roughness of the surface. So we can combine these two or uh, make different point 4 and 5 but I would prefer to combine these two force because uh, they are relating to each other that friction force does not depend upon the contact surface area but it defend, uh, depends upon the roughness of the surface. Now talking about uh, laws of dynamic friction, following are the laws of dynamic friction. First one is the friction force always acts in the direction opposite to that in which the body is moving. So this is the first law which was similar to the laws of static friction. The ratio of limiting friction and the normal reaction is constant. This is also similar to the static friction mu is equal to f by n. Third, now third one says for the moderate speeds the friction force remains constant but it decreases slightly with the increase of speed. That means if we consider this box moving with constant velocity the frictional force will experienced by this box will also be constant. But Increasing the speed of this box will decrease the friction that is by increasing the uh, force or we can say the speed of this box the frictional force will slightly decrease that is what the law of third law of dynamic friction for the moderate speeds the frictional force remains constant but it decreases slightly with the increase in the speed. Now after understanding uh, Laws of static and dynamic frictions will understand what are the disadvantages and advantages of friction. So at first we will go with the advantages of friction. We can walk on the floors. So that is the first advantage of friction. If there was no friction, the every surface was uh, frictionless then uh, will not be able to walk on the floor as our leg will slip. Ladder can be supported on the wall. Yes, the upper end of the ladder that is if we consider this two surface and this ladder then this upper surface and bo bottom surface both will be supported due to friction. Screws and nails can be fixed in the wall and wooden members yes then vehicles can be stopped by applying the brakes. So when we apply the brakes the rubber tires are used which are having that threading to stop the vehicle due to the friction only. So now you know why the design which is made on the tire 
important and how does it stop the vehicle so these were the example uh, advantages of the friction but uh, with the advantages there are few limitations or we can say disadvantages of frictions too due to, due to the friction machine parts are worn out and required to be changed so there are few machine parts uh, which are worn out due to friction tires of the vehicle are worn out and required to be changed this uh, due to friction when we brake the tires are getting worn out day by day or with it's running uh, third one is power consumption increases in the machine due, as we know that uh, due to friction the efficiency of the machine decreases and due to that power consumption will increase for example if we take a fan if our fan is old then it will have more power consumption due to the bearing friction the bearings will be not efficient uh, for old fan noise is produced due to friction this is an example of braking of our car when we brake there will there is a noise due to the friction between the tire and the road surface the last one is the heat is produced which may damage the machine parts so many a times in machine there is a heat produced due to the friction there are numerous more examples you can write in the exam but uh, this was just for understanding this was all about uh, laws of friction advantages and disadvantages wait for the eighth part of the friction where we'll be solving few examples till that time do watch all the videos and subscribe the channel if you are still not subscribed